Oh, my fondest childhood memory would have to be those days when I used to go to church with my mom. Like, it was the most amazing thing because when I look back, it's one of those things that I hardly ever do now. And I remember a couple of a couple of weeks ago, I was in Mahalape and I had brought an outfit with me. And I was like, I'm going to go to church with her just to surprise her because she had always been saying, Kwiti, can are people from my church who are supporting you? Or look a big brother and they'd love to see you. And I'm like... But I'm um, hardly ever there. So yeah, we didn't go and I was like, but I brought an up. She's like, why didn't you wake me up? I'm like, I set the alarm and I don't know what happened. So I miss those. Like those are the most memories that come up when I think of my childhood. Yeah, going to church with my mom, being with my friends, you know, like uh, Sunday school. Yeah, those. Surprisingly, I have always wanted to become a performer. I remember back when I was uh, five, six, I think, it goes as early as that. I remember I would like call my younger sister and my friends and our helper and I'd sit them down, make an audience and be like, okay, I'm gonna perform for you guys. I mean, it was the silliest thing ever, but it was the most fun. Yeah, so I've always wanted to be, and I was like, I'm going to try as much as I can to study everything and anything that has to do with art or performance and make sure that this is exactly what I get to do when I grow up. I studied theatre at the University of Botswana and I graduated 2014. I decided to audition for Big Brother because I thought, you know what, I've always wanted to be on stage and this is more like a grand stage where I get to be seen by people all over the world. So I remember just like shortly after finishing my exams, auditions were on and I had like always said to my mom, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And I remember I wanted to go, but I was not 21 by the time. So I was like, okay, maybe I should wait for next year, finish my studies and then go. And that was like a perfect um, move for me because it was shortly after I had completed my degree. And I was like, okay, yes, then I get to do this. And it, it's always going to be like an audition, like every single day. So whatever I'm going to do after BBA, Anybody who has seen it, it's going to be like, oh, you saw me do that. This is what I'm capable of doing. Yeah. The Big Brother Africa experience was the most um, exciting and interesting journey I've ever been in. I mean, from the day I left Bortz, I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm just going to be on this adventure and acknowledge every minute of it. So I walked into the house, I was nervous of course, and I was like, okay, I'm going to be in that house with 25 people who I don't even know, and I'm going to have to get used to them, and I'm, ha I'm going to have to entertain Africa in everything I do. So that was kind of like overwhelming, but interesting at the same time. I'm such a poetic person. I love poetry, I love drawing, I love uh, art, I love photography, I love anything to do with art. So I was like, okay, um, the best way to really explain to people who I am is through how I dress. So my style kind of like describes the kind of person I am. I, I tend to be more of a naturalistic, like in terms of, I'm a minimalist. So in everything I wear, you'd find it's always like pants, my tank top or like a cardigan or whatever on. It's always like very little and I try to accessorize and play around with stuff and I hate blending in. I hate blending in. So I always try to bring in one element that stands out, like my shoes for instance, like my pants, like anything that stands out. Yeah, so I always play around with such things and then I try to fuse in like I see jewelry in it, like in my hair, I'd put like things like you can see I have gold silver and the red ones. Yes, okay, in short, I'd describe my style as street grunge because I'm a little bit of a tomboy. I have a little bit of the gaily part in me and then I have that retro look. I love the whole vintage yeah, feel to it. Idris. 
the Tanzanian guy. Um, what happened is he was kind of like too strong for me. Like he came out too strong for me. I mean, we were in the house for like a, a day or two and he had already like come up to me and say, Huiti, I like you. At first he said, Huiti, I like you. And I was like, okay, um, do you like me because I gave you my bed because you had nowhere to sleep or you like me like me? And then the second day he's like, Huiti, I love you. And I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with this guy? He hardly knows me and he's coming forth as an I love you. And I was like, oh my God, how do I respond to this? And I said, thank you. And he made a joke out of it because on Wednesday we had the wager task. And he was like, I walked up to this girl and I said, I love you. And she said, thank you. And I'm like, how do you expect me to react? We spoke about it there. It was only the two of us. And then you come in and make a joke out of it. So does that mean I'm a joke to you or what? And days passed by and I was like okay okay I kind of like him as well I'm one person who was very emotional in the house I didn't hide anything about like I cried a lot I would swear I'd curse I'd fight and do all of those things and he'd come for like he'd be the first person to jump in and say Huiti are you okay Huiti what's wrong Huiti why are you crying yeah so I grew to like him and the date the date was a bit of a shocker because at that time I was confused. Here was a guy who would say he loves me and he would spend the night in Ella's bed and cuddle with other girls and I was like how should I really take in all this and express how I feel towards him. That's why I kind of like reserved most of my emotions and I and I was kind of like um, a little bit closed off when it came to Idris. But when I look back, I'm like, maybe I'm to blame at some point because I kind of like pushed him away in a sense. And all these other women who were after him would console him. And I'm like, yeah, that wasn't a good move. Um, when it comes to Idris and I and the current situation, I feel that we had a chance when we got out of the house. But I feel that I want my relationship to be more private and he is more of, I want people to know what we are up to. Because there was something that he said to me in the house. He said, um, if you can't handle the pressure of our relationship in the house how are you gonna handle it outside and I'm like we're not gonna be dating these other these other people outside so it's gonna be about me and you um, this is the first time I'm talking about this we met February in South Africa and that was the first time I saw a very attractive side of him so we got to sit down we talked about so many things and we got to understand what it is that we wanted and i went back to botswana he went back to tanzania and everything went hey you, like it, it just went crazy i don't even have a word for it like it just went crazy it blew next thing samantha was in tanzania and i was like okay what is happening now so i was like you know what maybe i should just forget about this so i just blocked him out basically yeah rumors about me and lupindo nanga i've been practicing the same name i don't know why but uh, <laughs> it's weird no that's the best thing we did when we met i was like hi i'm huiti april kasson is like how do you say your name i'm like why do you have to bother about pronouncing my same name you should try pronounce my name so yeah that was crazy um we're such good friends um we talk of course um yeah we such good friends <laughs> we we such good friends Quincy as a musician that's the interesting one 
um when i got out of the house i thought okay what's going to happen because i just graduated from the university of botswana and i studied theater so what's going to happen is it going to be acting or dancing cuz i did more dancing before i went to big brother so it was more of oh god i don't know what i'm going to do and i remember i met up with one of my friends um she's very close to me she's like my older sister she's like hoity what are you going to do now career wise i'm like i don't know i feel so lost I've never felt like that. I've always been that kind of person who knows exactly what they want to do, who knows the next move. I always have like plan C, plan D, plan E. But this time around it was kind of like a shocker. I was like at a dead end. I'm like, "Oh shoot, what's next now?" So I was like, "Okay. I've always loved to be on stage and I've always and I feel like the microphone is like that center because everything I do is always to the microphone." So I was like, "I write I do poetry, I dance, I love music, I act. So how about I go into music? Then I get to use my poetry, I get to always listen to music and I get to dance and I get to act out whatever that my song says on my video. So I was like, okay, I think this kind of like caters for all of these little things and I get to be as creative as I want in terms of my outfits, in terms of my hair, like all of that. People still get to see me. So I released Shit, like shit that was more of I was thinking dance. It was more of okay, think of a dance move and work around it. So I was like, okay, shit that you can do that and I can get people to dance to that. And then that happened. I did shit like it wasn't about vocals, it wasn't about the context. It was about the instrumentals, it was is it was about um pardon, it was about um dancing. And then after Sheta people were like what's next? Are you going to do an album or this is just one of those you feel you need to have a song and that's it. I was like I don't know. Let me go discover myself first. I took a while because I needed to understand the kind of sound that I wanted for my music. So I disappeared for a while and I came back and I was like copycat. Copycat it's a very chilled beat. compared to Sheta and I get to say out what's in my heart and what's in my mind. Yeah, so it's more poetic. It speaks to me. It's like I stand in front of a microphone and just say whatever that comes to my head. Yeah. And that's very fun. I'm going to do more music now and uh, just challenge myself and see what I can do and I'm going to be in a stage production. I didn't see this coming. I just got a call from a very close friend of mine and he's also a director. He's like, "Hoity, I wrote a play and I have a role for you." And I'm like, "You're not going to audition me?" He's like, "No. I have a part for you. I'm such a perfectionist. So I feel like my mind is going to be all over the place. I need to focus. So it's just going to be music and stage productions." One item that's very significant to me right now would have to be this. Um this is my belt of course from the Big Brother Africa house. I've had it. Okay, they gave us they gave them to us um the first day we went into the house. It's so significant to me because I feel Had and I not been on Big Brother, I wouldn't have met so many people that have contributed to my life so much. I wouldn't have met the crazy Idris. I wouldn't have had so many haters. <laughs> yeah, that one is weird. Um yeah, I mean, this brings a lot of memories. Like it takes me to the first day I went for my first official like the 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 almost the last auditions of Big Brother when we went to South Africa. And I remember I missed my flight and I was crying and I told my mom maybe this is not meant for me maybe I sh- this is a sign that I shouldn't be part of this. I went into the car I was crying I was like can you guys please get into the car let's go home. I don't want to do this anymore. And my mom was like you can't give up like so easily. You wanted to do this so bad and you're so close. And I remember she got me a ticket. and it was expensive she didn't have the money but she was like quickly i'm going to pay for it 
and through that I met like my chaperone was the most amazing woman ever and she bought this cardigan for me on my birthday and like I got so many things I got to meet people I've always wanted to meet like Fezza right now she's kind of like my close friend like all these people that I got close to from the Big Brother Africa house and the people that I got to meet even after that my key I have so many mothers now my Kenyan mom my Tanzanian mom my South African like I have so many moms now I get so many gifts from Nigeria from all over the place I'm so grateful I feel like without Big Brother all of this I would have experienced in probably like two decades to come so I'm grateful that I'm leaving the moment now so yeah this is like very important to me <sighs> I mean, should I do it perfectly? Yeah. She just blow. Did I just do that? I mean, keep to the left, man. Do your own niche. I got the right, yeah. Yeah. Call him a ho. I guess I call him a tigalo. It's a fresh new chapter, and I'm a, I'm a build up to the top. Yeah. It's a whole new bag that I copy. Get quiet. So, but I mean, it's gotta do what she gotta do. I mean, it gotta happen still. <laughs>